prepare for the sequel to the best-selling Star Wars game of all time. Fight as a Jedi. Fight in space. Fight the battles any way you want. Star Wars Battlefront 2. On Tuesday, you fight again. Rated teen. Star Wars Battlefront 2 was once again developed by Pandemic Studios and released on October 31st, 2005. 2005 was also arguably the best year ever for Star Wars video games. We got Republic Commando, the original LEGO Star Wars game, the underrated Revenge of the Sith movie tie-in game, and Battlefront 2's release coincided with the DVD release of Revenge of the Sith. I remember watching the trailer for Battlefront 2 on the DVD all the time, over and over again. Every time my family would go to Blockbuster, I would almost always rent Battlefront 2 back on the PS2. Battlefront 2 made some really nice improvements over Battlefront 1. My two main criticisms of the original were the lack of a sprint and the lack of a real campaign. Sprinting was added in Battlefront 2 and the campaign was much better and told a really interesting story. During the campaign, you will be a part of the 501st from the Battle of Megiddo all the way to Hoth. This time around you actually have objectives to complete. This is a nice improvement from the first game where you just took part in the standard battles. Your objectives range from taking control of a command post to defending an area. He has some super interesting scenarios in this campaign. One sees Naboo fed up with the Empire and they break off and begin growing their military force. And the 501st is sent in to stop them and you even kill the Queen of Naboo. On another level, a Gian Ocean who managed to escape Vader's efforts to wipe out the CIS created his own droid army on Mustafar, and as the Empire, you go down there and wipe out the droids. And the most heartbreaking level to me is the level on Kamino. Fighting against your former clone brothers just sucks. It always makes me feel bad, and this is just a really interesting concept. A clone rebellion against the Empire? Uh, that's something I really hope is eventually explored in the Bad Batch. The Order 66 level on Coruscant is really cool, fighting against all the Jedi and defending the Jedi Library, and taking over Anakin Sky, I mean Darth Vader, and hunting down the Jedi Masters is also a really cool thing to do. The Death Star is another fun level. You can even go into the Trash Compactor. Uh, when me and my friend discovered this uh, when we were kids, we thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And the journals that are presented before each mission are great and have this haunting atmosphere about them. Tomorrow Morrison gives a great performance when reading these. What I remember about the rise of the Empire is, is how quiet it was. During the waning hours of the Clone Wars, the 501st Legion was discreetly transferred back to Coruscant. It was a silent trip. We all knew what was about to happen, what we're about to do. Now unfortunately, this game no longer fits into the main Star Wars canon, even before Disney took over. It wouldn't have fit anymore after what we learned about the clones during the Clone Wars series. It made clear that the clones are aware of what they're doing and fully know about Order 66, and you can still enjoy the story, and if you only take the main films as canon, then they'll still fit. But if you're like me and you prefer the way the Clone Wars portrayed these events, then unfortunately it can't be seen as canon anymore. Similar to the first game, you have multiple classes to choose from, but you can actually play as Jedi and other hero and villain characters this time around. You have a lot of different game modes to choose from. Conquest, where you capture command posts. Capture the flag, where you capture the flag. Hunt, where you can hunt down the indigenous species of a planet. For example, you can hunt down the Ewoks on Endor, or my personal favorite, the Wampas on Hoth. Or if you want to have an even better time, you can play as the Wampas and kill all the rebels. Battlefront 2 also introduced space battles where you can fly into the enemy's ship, disrupt it from the inside, or just dogfight out in space. But the greatest game mode of all, and still highly requested of the newer games to this day, is Galactic Conquest. In Galactic Conquest, your goal is total domination of the galaxy with some great improvements from the first game that really gives this mode a long lifespan. When you begin your conquest, you only have the basic assault class, and you can purchase other classes with credits from winning battles. You can also spend your credits on purchasing boosts for your side, like extra Bacta, or reinforcements, or playable hero and villains. It's a lot deeper than the first game, you can also spend your credits on creating more ships. It's an amazing mode, and something I'm sure we would all love to see return one day.
the gameplay still holds up to this day. It's still fast, fun, and really responsive. This is a defining game from my childhood, and it's considered one of the GOATs for a reason. When EA released their Battlefront games, they couldn't reach the high bar that the original Battlefront 2 set back in 2005. That's one of the many reasons they got so much backlash when those games were originally released. Original Battlefront 2 released as a feature-rich, fun, exciting game that so many of us are still playing, and it's still one of my favorite games of all time, and it's definitely still worth your time in 2021. As the Rebels fled, the 501st gathered around a burning bunker and let out a cheer that shook the stars. The rebellion was done. The Death Star was being rebuilt bigger than ever. Order had finally returned to the galaxy. In no small part due to the efforts of the fighting men of the 501st.